I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do an interesting experiment that someone suggested down in the comments of another video. When I dye yarn using this catering steam pan, I always have two burners on my stovetop turned on. See, two burners. Now, I try my best to have heat even throughout, but obviously with the two burners on, the heat is concentrated in some areas. And it's hard to tell if some variation between skeins could be a result of uneven distribution of heat. But without a good knowledge of where those heat pockets are, it's really hard to determine if that makes a difference. So today we're gonna to try to exaggerate that. And today I'm only gonna have one burner on. We're gonna set up the whole dye path to do some kind of semi-solid slash tonal type colorway. And then we're just gonna turn on one burner and see what happens. Currently in my four inch deep full size catering steam pan, I have 24 cups of water. And I'm debating how much yarn I want to add because I want the dye to be able to move around the yarn, but also maybe not that much. So maybe I'll start with the pan a little more crowded and then we can uh, do another version depending on what the results we see the first time. If you'd like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I'm using for this video, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. I think we will start with 200 or 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I have pre-soaked it for about half an hour so that way the fibers are really saturated. I'm going for an orange type color today. We're gonna to use a combination of some old 1% stock solutions of Dharma Saffron Spice and Jacquard Aztec Gold. All right, for this first shot, let's shake it up and see how much of the Saffron Spice we have left. I would say we have What's halfway between 75 milliliters and 100 milliliters? Maybe like 86, 87 milliliters or so. But since it's the dregs, and we can even see there's a little bit on the bottom, it's probably a bit more pigmented than that, so it's approximate. Ideally, with stock solutions, they would be consistent, but when they are older, and both of these stocks are over a year old, when they are older, then stuff can crash out and settle, and so you can see some differences. So let's add approximately an equal part of the Aztec gold. Now, I think the saffron spice is more pigmented. So this is still looking very, it's probably gonna feel very saffron to me. Yeah, I actually don't feel a huge difference from that. This isn't a ton of pigment, but maybe we'll see if we get some unequal color absorption. Back to the pan. Let's now add these dyes. The one thing I did not heavily consider is if we have some clumps of undissolved dye, that could alter our results a little bit, but Let's go ahead and do, I guess let's only do 200 grams of yarn. I considered doing three, but I think that 200 grams will have more space to, uh, yeah, I think they'll have more space to be a little more spread out, more space for the dye. Yes, I think having only 200 grams will give more space for the dye to move without me stirring the pot um, and also to make more of a difference when we only have one burner on. All right, I've not yet added any acid. I am now going to, actually, no, I was starting to turn on the heat, but let's not yet. Let's add one, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm gonna pop the glove back on and stir things up a bit. 
because once the heat is on, I'm not going to want to stir. And we do want to have well distributed acid. Okay, that is not bad. And now I have only the burner right here on. So only the burner right here, and I have it on high currently, and I'm gonna keep it on high until I start seeing some bubbles, and then I will reduce it to low. Um, so I will check back in in about 10 minutes, or if I start seeing movement sooner. Don't forget, we do have 24 cups of water here, so there's a lot of volume, and it might take a while to heat up, especially with one burner. After three minutes, I do see some steam coming off down here, but obviously not down on the other side. Ooh, it would also be fun, and Rebecca, write this down. It would be really fun to do this with speckling. Get it set up with heat on only on one side, and then see what kind of differences happens on the yarn with that. That would be really cool. But I guess it would be hard if, that I would probably have to do with just one skein. Uh, don't you love when I'm coming up with new ideas in the middle of the Dye Pot Weekly and making notes that I'm hoping editor Rebecca will write down <laughs> for the future. Oh goodness. Anyway, I am reducing the heat a bit so that way the circle of the flame is a bit smaller. I think that when it's on high, it tends to heat the edges of the pan a lot. Uh, so I'm now on medium heat, even though we're not yet at a bubble. We are now 10 minutes in from where I first added the heat. It's steamy, no bubbles yet, and definitely no steam down here. So if there's been heat traveling, like I don't feel, it could be a little warm. Like this edge of the pan is hot. This is cool, but not cold, but I don't know what that necessarily says about anything. I will say I still see dye down here and it looks like I still see dye down there as well. So let's check back in in another 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes and we are not yet bubbling. I do see some color clearing down here, but I will say I am definitely seeing steam down there as well. And let me stick on a glove Okay, so the water is warm. I can stick my finger in it. It's gonna be hotter. Yes, it's hottest here. It's warm over near the edges. And it's pretty darn warm down here too. So it's the hottest over here, but it is definitely still warm down there. And actually, it's the, the colors are clearing all over. So I don't know. <laughs> With this first look, it doesn't look like for tonal kettle dyeing, it's making a huge difference that I can see, but we will take a closer look when it's time to remove the yarn, and then we might try it again with something else. I'm seeing beautiful tonal variation in here, but you know, I'm seeing some areas that look pretty pigmented down here. If there are major differences right now, it is really, really, really subtle, and I think it's hard to see on camera right now anyway. With our heat on medium, and I'm not sure how long it has been, I am seeing steam all over the pan. There's clearly more heat down here, but we're also still not bubbling. The heat is transitioning down. So I'm gonna let this go another 15 minutes, and then we'll check back in and see. But my gut is telling me that the color is starting to clear, that it's almost time to turn off the heat and just let things sit and cool. So we will evaluate in a little bit. It's been another 15 minutes and this is pretty much, pretty much clear. Um, there's a tiny bit of color back there, but I don't think there's enough to make a huge difference. I am now actually gonna turn on the rear, um, I'm gonna turn on the rear burner. I'm gonna bring this up to just below a simmer, and then I'm gonna turn off the heat and let things cool off completely, or in the pan, or until everything is absorbed. We have a little shadow down there, so it is not easy to be definitive on the color, but this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pick up one of these skeins. It's still warm. Okay, the color, 
that had less heat. Ugh, I picked a bad color because it's hard to see on camera. It is objectively lighter than the color that was at the other end with more heat. Super subtle. Super subtle. But as I move it around, you can tell where the zip tie is. It's a tad bit lighter. Let's look at the other skein. Yep, I see the same thing. It is a bit lighter than the depth that we see on the other side. So, I think that you can take advantage of something like that to make some fun tonals. I'm actually gonna tighten the zip ties where they are so that way the zip ties are on the lightest ends so that way we can compare that when we go and wash things. Now, there are other tonal things in here that aren't a result of the heat, so it's not super conclusive, but it's good. Let's wash the yarn. Yeah, the heat definitely made a difference that I think is more, like the lightest end to the darkest end, I think the difference is more pronounced than what it would have been if uh, the heat was on more evenly. But the difference is still super, super subtle. I think I'm going to want to take another look at this in a future video. Uh, and we'll try something where I think the amount of heat that the yarn is exposed to will make more of a difference. If we saw no difference at all right now, then I probably would have tried something else in this video. But let's give this beautiful orange tonal um, its own moment to shine. <laughs> and I'll take another look another day. And we are seeing some bleeding. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I'm not entirely surprised. But I'm not sure why. Actually, it's really not that bad. But I am going to go do a couple rinses off camera and then I will come back and check in. But it's, and we'll try a second soap round when I come back. All right, I've done a number of just rinses and we're looking pretty good. So let's add some soap. Just a little bit of soap, just a little bit of soap and see what happens. I believe I've had some issues with this orange stuff. I haven't used the Aztec Gold as much, so. Hey, we're good. Okay, I'm gonna put this through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I'm not gonna say anything, but you can see the difference between where we have more color and less color. Do you see it? Oh, well, actually, the zip ties are tightened and you know where I did that, so we've got a darker color on one end, a lighter color on the other very, very clearly, and the darker color coincides to where I had the heat on at first. There also appears to be more variation down there, like more darker and lighter patches, whereas the color feels on the lighter end a little bit more even and a bit softer. Now, I cannot say with 100% certainty that this has and don't forget, I tightened these uh, at the end. These were not tight all along. I cannot say with 100% certainty that this variation is not due to how I added the yarn into the pan. So it's so subtle that I can't make firm, firm conclusions like that. Does asymm asymmetric heat make a difference? Probably. It probably makes a difference. There's probably differences that we see with more color down there and it being a little bit paler up here. But again, it is so soft and subtle that I want to take another look at this. The difference I think is a little more obvious right now than it even was before. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and not only do I have plans to dive in and play with this more in the future, I've actually already filmed those videos. 
So please make sure that you are subscribed, have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. You turn on your notifications by pressing that bell icon. I am really excited to share some more results as I explore asymmetric heat with all of you and the other really pretty colorways that we create along the way. But I would like to hear from you. How would you set up an experiment to investigate this problem? What kinds of variations would you play around with? I look forward to hearing what you think. If you're a huge fan of Chemnitz and really enjoy the content I'm producing, but maybe don't need more yarn, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. It's a really fun way to support the channel and there's cool perks like early access to new videos and some behind the scenes sneak peeks and more. You can find more details about the Patreon through the link that is down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching everyone.